All right, so in this video, we're going to show you how you can create a new participant list or import a participant list from a CSV file. You're going to find the utility for participants and results management in a different location generally. So if I'm going to work with a local file, what I'm going to want to do is access the tray application uh, participants in this case. So we're going to bring up the participant wizard and obviously I can create a new file which I'll show in a moment or I can browse and modify an existing file uh, but most commonly you're going to bring in your class roster for some, from some other application or from your Google contacts or Google classroom uh, using a CSV file because that's the most common format that you can save to from any application. So we're going to browse and I'm going to find a CSV file that I've generated from one of these applications and click open and it's going to show me uh, I might have a header file here that says first name last name whatnot if so I'm going to tell it that the first record is a header file so it doesn't treat that as a student uh, in this particular case I see an actual name so I'm going to uncheck that checkbox and then I'm going to map the fields that I need to map specifically within our software all you really need is name and participant ID uh, participant ID is used for login, so we do need to have a number there for that. And the other fields don't really matter, so I'm just going to ignore them and click OK. And it's going to build my class roster. And if I wanted to, I could go in and edit or modify these details directly within that form, but most likely the way I want them already. So I'm going to click Finish. And it's going to save a Quizdom participant list called QPL, and I'm just going to put that back in this case on my desktop. So where you're going to use that in the future is when I start a session. One of my options is for browse for participant list. And so again, if I go back to my desktop, I can see that class 1A. And that's how I specify that I want to use that file once I've created it. Now to sort of back up and take a look at the other options that we had in there, uh, if I go back to the participants wizard, I can browse and modify an existing one so we can find that class roster that we've already created and we can go back and edit that file again. Or of course if we wanted to, we could just create a new class from scratch. So that's if we're going to build and work with a local class roster. If you're also wanting to use the online features of the program where you can assign content for students to work independently at their own pace through uh, the Blend site, uh, then you're actually going to want to use an online list instead. And where you would find that is if we go to the Lessons section, under Online Courses, we actually have a Participants button. And so I would choose that Participants option there. And that takes me straight into the classes section of the software where I can modify my existing classes. I already had a couple classes in here already. Or I can say create new class. So in this case, we're going to say create class. And similar options to what we did with the local file. I can upload an existing class roster or I can manually create a class list. So if I'm going to upload a class roster, we're just going to call this class test and we're going to browse for that class roster and we're going to say we want uh, demo class 1A click next um, uh, device ID um, we don't need that uh, it will create it automatically um, we're just going to select first name last name uh, and username and password we don't have in that CSV file that I already generated in this particular case, but if you had them, you would fill those in. So when I take a look at that test class, it actually built it. Now it created some uh, cryptic usernames, so if you do have username and passwords that exist already for your students, you'll probably want to bring those in as part of the CSV file. Uh, so that you don't get a cryptic username like with a system auto-generated here in this particular case. I can edit any of these fields. I can manually update these fields as well. So this is how you would manage classes if they're existing in the online system. And then again, to use those, when I start a session, 
we're going to choose online classes and then I can choose the class roster that I want to use from online classes. And that way, the same class roster is being used locally as well as online.